I have 6.30, are you folks ready to go? Sure am. Uh, Scott, are we good to go? Okay. Uh, if I could indulge you to shut the door. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Jack Courier. I live here in Nashua. I serve you as a chairman of the Nashua Zoning Board. Uh, to my right, to your left, is Mr. J.P. Boucher. He's our vice chair and acting clerk tonight because Mary Ellen is on vacation. Also have members Rob Shaw and Steve Lionel. To my left is uh, Mr. Carter Falk. He uh, serves on staff as a de deputy planning manager. Uh, a couple things, if, uh, I, if I could ask you to silence or turn off your cell phones during the proceeding of the meeting, I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you didn't know, these meetings are recorded actually in three venues. They're recorded visually, so the cameras are rolling now and I need to thank Scott behind the door who's gonna capture all the action and it'll probably be replayed in a couple of days on uh, channel 16. Uh, this meeting is also recorded on audio. Uh, it's digitally being recorded. And in a few days, you can listen to this at gonashua.com and you kind of click through to find the ZBA. And also there'll be a written transcript of uh, tonight's discussion and th that will serve actually as the legal uh, recording so because uh, we record the meetings and it's completely transparent, uh, I, I ask that only one person speaks at a time and that person speaks into a microphone. And I also ask who's ever speaking to address the board. So in other words, if you have questions, say for an applicant or someone else, uh, we ask that you address the board and we'll get those questions answered. I've been at meetings where it's in this fashion where you address the board or you address each other, and, and I, I think this works much better. Uh, and a little bit about us, we're just lay people. We're citizens here in the city of Nashua who have an interest in serving on government. We're appointed by the mayor and approved by the Board of Aldermen. Uh, and I know some folks here have been here a lot and know all the rules, but I'd like to read through the rules uh, for any newcomers who are either in the audience or uh, or watching on TV. Uh, first, uh, I'll talk about, we'll be hearing uh, tonight both variances and special exceptions. And for those who aren't aware, those are variances to this Nashua Big Book of Code or special exceptions, which are a little different than a variance. So uh, this board doesn't write this book. This board, uh, it is the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor who ultimately approved this book. And there's lots of little details in there. And the state of New Hampshire has enacted boards like this, the Zoning Board of Adjustment, to hear uh, requests for deviations. So there's two types of deviations we're going to hear tonight. Uh, the first is uh, for variances. And I'll briefly tick through the five criteria. Uh, number one, that the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Number two, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Number three, substantial justice is done. Number four, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. And number five, the literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. So that's the five criteria that at least three members here tonight need to be satisfied to, to vote favorably for a request for a variance. Uh, we're also hearing tonight a special exception, and the special exception has slightly different criteria, and I'll read that. Number one is that the use is listed in the table of uses, and our special exception tonight is listed in the table of uses. And what the table of uses is, is in this book, there's a list of approved special exceptions, one of which is working within a wetland, for example. So uh, the second of five special exception requirements is that the requested use or activity will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. Number three, again for a special exception, is a requested use will not overload any public water drainage or sewer system or any other municipal system. Number four is that any special exception regulations 
uh, set forth in the zoning ordinance are fulfilled. And for example, uh, the, if we have a wetland request before us, which we do tonight, there's criteria for a wetland special exception that needs to be satisfied. And then the fifth uh, requirement uh, it, for a special exception is that the requested use or activity will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the district or immediate neighborhood. So that's the five criteria for a special exception. And then uh, the other uh, rules I'd like to tick through is how this board uh, hears cases. Each case tonight, and there's four cases, and if folks don't have them, there's a list of the tonight's agenda on that back table. So if you don't have one and, and want to get one, feel free to do so. Um, so there's two components to the each case tonight. The first is a public hearing, and the public hearing is where we hear from you, the public, and the applicant will speak first. The applicant has up to 15 minutes to present their case. We have a clock here that'll tick down from 15 minutes. The light will be green for the first 14 minutes. It'll be yellow from minute 14 to 15, and then, and then it'll turn red if you're still speaking at that 15 minute mark. Uh, it's likely that folks up here will have questions, uh, so be ready for that. Uh, after the applicant has spoken, anybody else who wants to speak in favor of the application will have up to five minutes to uh, provide their testimony to us. After all testimony in favor of an application has been heard, anyone with questions, concerns, or opposition will have up to five minutes to present their uh, points. If there is opposition, then the applicant will have five minutes after the opposition to address the opposition. And if there is op opposition after the applicant has spoken, one and only one person who has spoken in opposition uh, will have the final five minutes. Uh, and then the public hearing portion of the case will be closed and the public meeting component will start. And that's where the four of us will deliberate and likely come to a decision. Uh, a few other points, uh, if any aggrieved party, uh, if there is an aggrieved party by a decision we make, the next step for you would be to request a rehearing and you have up to 30 days to do that. And if you're interested, you could contact Mr. Falk tomorrow. And also analogously, uh, any uh, case that is approved or denied uh, just be ready because there is that 30 day window of appeal and if this board were to get a rehearing request and if this board uh, felt merit and sought to rehear the case that decision would be stayed. So uh, with that I think I've gone through all of uh, the rules. Uh, any questions up here? Are there any questions from anyone in, in the audience? Seeing none, I think we'll kick things off with case number one. Uh, if the uh, applicant for case number one would like to come to the microphone. Uh, and also, uh, as you come to present or speak, if you're, the spelling of your name isn't obvious, I might ask you to spell it because we, we certainly want to get it right for the record. So, uh, and let me just read into the record. Case number one, uh, the owner is the city of Nashua. The address is 10 Whipple Street. Uh, specifically at the vicinity of Ledge Street and the Everett Street intersection. This is a request for a special exception to work in the 75-foot prime wetland buffer of the Nashua Canal to construct a pedestrian bridge to cross the Nashua Canal to connect to the Mine Falls Park Trail System. Hi, good evening. If you could give us your name and address for the record. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name's Sean James. It's uh, S-E-A-N. And I'm with uh, Hoyle Tanner and Associates. I'm not a resident of Nashua. Hi, welcome. And uh, would you like to walk us through your application? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we were retained, Hoyle Tanner was retained by the uh, city of Nashua and representing the city is uh, Sarah Marchant's here tonight as well. Uh, we were retained by the city to uh, design this project, which is a transportation alternative project, which generally is um, projects that don't involve uh, vehicular traffic. The general idea of the, tra the project is to connect the Heritage Trail down uh, Everett Street, cross Ledge Street, and into the park. Now I do have, it was in the application, I do have extra copies of figure one. It's the last page, I think, in there. I can bring those up if that'd be all right, Mr. Chairman. Sure, if you'd like to walk on up and pass those around. 
remembering that when you're not at the mic, we can't hear you, but thank you for bringing those to us. Same size. <coughs> the same size. Yeah. Thank you. I have extra copies if anyone <coughs> in the audience. So the, this is a plan view, and, es and essentially what we are here tonight for, as you mentioned, was the special exception for uh, the wetlands, prime wetlands, and the buffer. So the project itself, which is shown in the plan, this is uh, at the Mine Falls end of it. It involves construction of a new pedestrian bridge over the canal. So that's where we come into the, the prime wetlands part of the project. What we're proposing for the project is um, to support the bridge on helical piles, Think of it like a big screw, screw it into the earth, and then they pick up the load of the bridge. The reason we're looking to do that is to minimize the impacts in the area. Instead of doing a lot of excavation, uh, having a lot of impact, we're trying to limit the impacts as much as we can in the area. Um, the type of structure we're proposing is a steel truss. That's also consistent with the area. There's already um, one in Mine Falls and it's the history of Nashville. There's several examples that have crossed the canal and other areas, so it'd be a prefabricated steel truss is, is the type of bridge we're looking at. The project doesn't create any additional parking. What it entails is a ramp at the Heritage Trail to get you down to Everett Street. Go along the road. It's just gonna be paint, basically, on the pavement to guide you to Ledge Street. There'll be a regulated crossing um, at Ledge Street and then we'll take you into the park with a small amount of pavement to get to the bridge and then enter Mine Falls Park. So the project really has no effect on traffic or traffic congestion. As I mentioned, we're, we're not adding any parking, we're not adding tra traffic, it's all vehicular and, and bicycle traffic. The project itself, we've had two public information meetings. One was in this building, uh, one was in the PAL Center near the project. Uh, generally had favorable support for the project. Um, in both of those. We've also previously gone on June 6th to the Conservation Commission. We had an initial meeting with them. Went back to the Conservation Commission on June 19th uh, for a site walk and then a second uh, meeting on June 19th, which they had a favorable recommendation of the, of the project at that point. So that's the process we've been through. As far as the project itself and some of the criteria you, you mentioned and you look at, Again, we're trying to be the least damaging. We're following all the existing pavements, so there's no impact really until you get to the park, which is what's shown here in the picture. Uh, we add a small amount of pavement, uh, which is in the gray. So we have different types of impacts. The, the gray represents permanent buffer impacts, and then there's two type of hatches, either a temporary wetland impact or temporary buffer impact. So we have, we have both. Generally, where it's, it's a buffer impact, a little bit of the wetland impact. So again, I mentioned we use the helical piles to, to minimize our impacts there. Uh, as far as mitigating what the work we're doing, uh, there are invasive species along the wall, the retaining wall. Uh, there's five, uh, a couple are bittersweet, Japanese barberry, uh, and three others. So as part of the project, uh, we'd be directing the contractor to remove those within the, uh, the impact areas we have. That was part of what we talked about with the Conservation Commission as far as mitigation. Uh, the use of the bridge, the purpose of the whole project is to gain additional access at that end of the park for uh, residents in the area, particularly the Tree Streets neighborhoods. Um, we did check with the Natural Heritage Inventory. There's no rare endangered species there. On the federal side, the lo northern long-eared bat did come up as a potential uh, in the area, so we will minimize any tree clearing or uh, activities within the time frames to, to avoid impact to that on the federal level. Uh, as far as the um, temporary impacts and wetland impacts, this is all funded. It's, it's, there's three funding sources. There's uh, largely it's federal run through the New Hampshire DOT and then the 20% is on the, 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 uh, the city level. However, the regulations that we're gonna be following are New Hampshire DES and New Hampshire DOT. So all the temporary erosion control will follow all the New Hampshire DES standards and New Hampshire DOT standards during construction. 
really, we have fairly minimal impacts. The values are on the, on the sheet there. And I won't read them off again. But so we're not going to really impact or impair the, the wetland capacity there. The stability of the bank, again, we don't see any issues there. On the uh, east side or the Lead Street side, there's a stone retaining wall there. We'll be behind that. Again, we're, drive, we're doing the helical pile so we don't impact the wall or the bank there. Uh, and there'll be some stone around the abutment. On the west side or the, or the park side, uh, again, we'll have a minimal concrete abutment surrounded by some stone so that we don't uh, impact. Any temporary impacts will be um, you know, uh, addressed by the contractor, and we'll have a little bit of stone there for permanent impacts. Uh, as far as bank, and then really as far as ab absorption of water in the air is very minimal impact. The only real permanent uh, change is the, the little bit of pavement we have in, um, you know, the water on the bridge would, would sheet off the bridge. So. so that's generally an overview of it. You know, the, the criteria specifically mentioned as well is, you know, it is listed in the table of uses. Uh, we addressed the traffic. I didn't mention utilities. There's no effect at all on utilities. We're not doing any changes uh, to those. Um, and I don't believe there's any regulations or uh, character of the area if we're adversely affecting. With that, I can open up to any, any questions you may have. Uh, questions for Mr. James? Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, sure. It's actually not about specifically the wetland impact, but uh, the, the path from the trail down Everett Street, is that going to be a, a separate path, or is that going to be like a kind of a painted way, or is that going to be on the sidewalk? I was just curious. Yeah, it'd be a, a painted way. We'd, we'd call it a shared use shoulder. Okay. So it's going to be delineate, delineated with pavement markings for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. Okay. There won't be a raised sidewalk. All right. And then, like, uh, where, where that kind of brickwork is with some park benches, I got to tell you, I didn't notice that was there until I did a site walk this week. How long has that been there? I, I, I'm not sure. Okay. It's <laughs> Sarah's indicating it's been there a long time. Okay. I guess I just haven't noticed it going by. And then the other... Uh, question is uh, the Conservation Commission mentioned about uh, bollard or bollards to prevent a ATVs or disencourage that and was were you aware of that in the letter are you okay with that was that going to be placed there right do you want to address that one sir Good evening. For the record, Sarah Marchant, Community Development Director. Yes, the Conservation Commission had a concern about the potential for ATVs or other motorized vehicles to use the bridge to get into the park. They already have some concerns with that, and so their recommendation was to add bollards. Um, I'd, as long as they're removable bollards, um, Fire Department has expressed their interest in being able to get some of their equipment over this to be able to rescue people easier. And so um, as long as they're removable bollards, I don't have any issues with that. <coughs> Thank you. Um, any other questions for <laughs> Ms. Marchand or Mr. James? I, I think we're all set, so you can have a seat. Okay. See what happens. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak in favor of the proposed pedestrian cross at Ledge and Everett? Is there anybody with questions, concerns, opposition? Questions, concerns, or opposition? You have, uh, we have a fellow here. If you'd like to come to the microphone, sir, and give us your name and address and let us know uh, what's on your mind. Good evening. My name is Richard Gillespie, and I live at 15 Spencer Drive in Nashua. I'm a longtime member of the Mine Falls Park Advisory Committee. The committee has voted not in favor of this bridge and has the following concerns. It is our opinion the bridge at this location will have a detrimental impact on the environmentally sensitive cove area, a prime wetland located directly down the embankment from the bridge. There is already a long history of illegal activities occurring here <clears throat> under the cover of darkness and dense vegetation. A direct connection to the highest crime rate section of the city would likely increase that activity here. There are no plans to control usage of the park after posted hours. It would be very easy for illegal activities to migrate into the park, especially after dark. There are already three entrances within one half mile of this location. 
<clears throat> anyone looking for exercise should be willing to walk a little bit to get there. Another entrance is not needed in this location. There are no benefits to Mine Falls Park from this entrance. We should be protecting our park resources, not exposing them to destruction. If Mine Falls Park gets a reputation for being unsafe, the city has lost a precious asset. It'll be very difficult to recover from that loss. Let's not be short-sighted. Don't sell out the park for a temporary feel-good moment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions for Mr. Gillespie? Mr. Shaw? I guess if you could just maybe elaborate on the, the uh, area that you said you're concerned about from the standpoint of environment, further environmental yes, impact the, or damage. The, uh, the canal is on an embankment or the top of the canal, and directly down to the west is the cove area. It's a very large, um, probably 20-acre area. The swans stay there in the summer, and uh, it's, it's a very pristine wetland down there. It uh, has a 75-foot buffer, which is probably not affected by this location, but it is directly down the slope. Okay, so just the, the, your your main concern is the proximity of access to that region, not the yes, dot. Yes, and the additional activity which could occur there because of the, the people drawn to the park. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I have a, are you all set? Um, that, I think the area you're talking about, I, I don't know if you can see this, this is like the Nashua River. Yes and the trail is here. Yes. And I think what you're talking about is this green That's correct. area down there. Um, I guess I've never walked in that, but I kind of, I thought that was uh, marshy. You'd almost need like a duck boat to go in there. Can you walk in there? Because I know you that- walk along, You can walk along the edge of it. The, the edge of it. So just kind of like at the bottom of the embankment around yes. the edge of it? Okay. And I guess uh, at times, when it hasn't been too much daylight out and I've been uh, on that embankment. I guess I feel it's like a catch-22 situation uh, because I can feel at times like it's kind of like no way out when I'm in that area. I have to kind of keep going to get up more to the mill yard mm -hmm. and that by having the bridge there or this proposed bridge, it, it to me, I, it would make me feel safer because if there was something going on or I wanted to get away, I could get right out to the street there. I, I certainly see your point where you're saying people can come in and get, you know, do bad activities after dark, but I also feel the other way. I think I would be more apt to be in that section of mine falls after dark on my bike with that bridge there. And I'm just wondering, if you think there might be that that situation also where there'd be more people using it because of the entrance and if there's more people using it there's less bad things that could go on i guess that's the way i'm seeing it anyway i guess it could be interpreted that way i uh personally i would not i'd be concerned about more people coming in there that shouldn't be there mm -hmm. than a few people going out mm -hmm. i mean if you're down there um it can be scary after dark. Mm -hmm. Things go on down there. There's drinking parties, uh, drug use down there, and it, it is a sketchy area. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be there after dark. You know, I've, I, I've forgotten as I, I sit here, when I, I did a site walk today by car and not by bike, but if you go west uh, along the trail, where's the next crossing? Along the canal? Or? Yeah, if, if, I'm, if I'm on, you know, the uh, north side of the canal, say where this proposed bridge would go in, but I'm going west over to like Simon Street or the, mm -hmm. you know, It'd the, the 7th Street Bridge. It's behind the Boys Club? Behind the Boys Club, okay. Yeah, I'd forgotten where the next one was, but thank you for reminding um, me. I guess I don't have any other questions at the moment. Um, anybody else? I think we're all set. Thanks. You could have a seat. Um, I didn't know, Ms. Marchant, or if you would like to speak to the opposition we've heard.
Thank you, Sarah Marshawn, again, for the record. Just very briefly, um, none of the access points have controls or locked gates after hours. There's a sign right near the entrance at the mill yard right here that does list the hours of the park when it's open and closed and how that works. Um, this, um, the wetland special exception is what's before you, as you know, and we're here to talk about wetlands impacts. Um, I will say that this grant application is a half million dollar grant that came from TAP and it was supported and granted because um, this is a direct request out of the Tree Streets neighborhood um, analysis plan. It's supported by the master plan and, the, and um, also some of the Broad Street Parkway original international design plans. It's supported by the Conservation Commission. Police, fire agree that they feel it would be much safer to have better access in and out of this area and to get more eyes on it. Um, PAL and NeighborWorks are, have been showing up at many of these meetings and even hosted a meeting in the neighborhood there to um, talk about support for this project and they're super excited about it going forward. So um, that's all I have at this point. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions for Ms. Marchand? No? Nope. You can have a seat. Um, Mr. Gillespie, it is your right if you want to, you have uh, five more minutes at the microphone to address what Ms. Marchand said, or you could rest, whatever your purview is. Would you like to speak again, or you're? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, uh, I just wanted to reiterate into the microphone that Mr. Gillespie is, is, uh, is okay. And so with that, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. And uh, any thoughts on the matter? Anybody want to jump in? Mr. Shaw? I, I, I'm actually very much still in favor of the application. I mean, I, I share and understand Mr. Gillespie's concerns on behalf of the committee. And I think there's, there's always going to be some of these kind of balances with what you might be doing as you increase the access to uh, a park like this, but I think that ultimately in some regards it really ends up being more about enforcement or other things if there really are issues there. And I think you actually, you know, noted, and I think rightfully, <coughs> that there is going to be some, I think, some benefit of safety from having additional egress and ingress into the, into the park. So, I mean, I think as far as the application itself and the merits of, you know, really what we're truly judge, uh, being you know, judged on as far as the special exception. It, it certainly seems that <coughs> all of the criteria are being well met, the, the least impactful methods, all the things that we you know, really need to look for. So uh, I think really in some regards even, even these questions I don't really feel like end up truly being something that we can weigh in on in terms of the ultimate merits of of the project in the sense of what might occur otherwise from it. Uh, and I think and I think there's actually a lot of compelling uh, even uh, <coughs> things noted by Ms. Marchand about the, um, the support from the community and especially the local community for this additional access. So. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boucher? I, I would uh, agree with Mr. Shaw. All right. Uh, Mr. Lino? I, I also uh, agree. That I think this is a, a wonderful idea. Um, I w again note that what's before us is the uh, wetlands uh, work and, and really we have no purview over, uh, over other issues. Um, I think that uh, additional access, uh, personally I'd be delighted to use it and the, the people in the neighborhood, uh, more people use it, the less likely there would be for uh, sketchy characters or whatever to hang around that area. Um, I don't see anything in here that suggests that um, the wetlands are being uh, disturbed to any significant extent. And uh, it looks like all of the uh, regulations have been met. Uh, so I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Um, my thoughts on it, uh, yes, we're here because the National Conservation Commission has a recommendation that we're you know, gonna add some finality to one way or the other. They're in favor of it. Uh, and it, 
I am too. I didn't want to lose sight of the opposition and just explore that a little, but just to, to play that out, my experience, I think back when the River Walk was just getting going, it really wasn't that popular several years ago. And there were times that I kind of peddled out of there very quick because there were some sketchy characters. Now it's getting used a lot more and I don't have those same experiences. And so just to the, the idea of uh, problems that might crop up, I tend to think that this will be an improvement to the area, not, not, not a setback. Uh, but again, we're here just for the special exception, and I think the special exception in, in the application meets all the criteria, and, and I'm in favor of it also. Um, I didn't know if somebody might want to make a motion. Mr. Shaw. All right. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of uh, Owner City of Nashua uh, with the address being 10 Whipple Street in the vicinity of the Ledge Street, Everett Street intersection. Uh, the uh, request is for a special exception to work in the 75-foot prime wetland buffer of the Nashua Canal to construct a pedestrian bridge to cross the Nashua Canal to connect to the Mine Falls Park Trail System. And this is in the GIMU zone. It is listed in the table of uses in uh, section 190-112. Uh, by testimony, there uh, will be no uh, increase in uh, traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety, uh, while there will be an additional uh, potential amount of pedestrian traffic. There's also uh, efforts being put in place to provide uh, uh, additional safety for that pedestrian crossing as part of uh, the, the project. Uh, there will not be any uh, overloading of public water, drainage, sewer, or any other municipal system. Uh, the special regulations are fulfilled by testimony. Uh, those are the nine uh, wetland special conditions, uh, both by written and verbal testimony. Uh, all criteria are being met. And uh, there will not be any uh, negative uh, impact uh, or integrity uh, effects on the uh, uh, or out of character with the neighborhood or detrimental to health morals or welfares of residents. Uh, there is a uh, communication from the Conservation Commission uh, from their meeting on June 19th, uh, communication dated June 20th, uh, with two stipulations. Uh, that the applicant agrees to adhering to, so we uh, duly note and include those in this approval. I uh, did, did do move to approve this uh, application uh, for the reasons just stated. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lionel. Any questions or discussion on the motion to approve? No discussion. A show of hands in favor of the approval that's for nothing so that's approved uh, keep in mind that there's the 30-day window of appeal 30 calendar day 30 calendar days starting tomorrow and with that I'll close the public meeting on case number one please, please pardon. pardon continue on I'll be back in one minute oh okay I'll continue on. you want me to continue okay we're gonna keep moving on here for case number two so I'd like to open the public hearing on case number two I'll read it into the record. The uh, owner is the Rita Seneca Revocable Trust. The address is 55 Wood Street. The request is a variance to encroach nine feet into the 10 foot required left yard, uh, side yard setback, and that's to maintain an existing shed. This is in the RA zone, Ward 3. And I, I know uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Boucher said he'd be right back. If you just want to hold on a second till he comes back, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, we won't start that clock because we want to give you the full 15 minutes. While he's doing that, why don't I spend some time? Can I just uh, put a couple of things up to Sure. Yep. So Now's a great time to do that. <laughs> we, we have this time. seen that.
Yeah, so take it away. Uh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. For the record, my name is Gerald Prunier. I'm an attorney here in Nashua representing the applicant this evening. Um, my usual thing is when there's four members, you don't have a full board, I object to proceeding. However, I will proceed based upon the ordinances in Nashua as they exist. If you look at the first page of what the handout that I gave you, it shows that there's a little finger that goes up next to the abutting uh, property owner. That is shown in more detail on the second page, even though you can a lot of trees. What this is, is a, the uh, motors for the pool, for the cleaning of the pool and so forth, are in this particular um, little um, enclosure. Um, I'd like to give you a little history so we could, this enclosure was done at best that we can figure out sometime in the early 70s, maybe even late 60s, when the pool was first put in, this was put in there. The uh, zoning ordinance changed, as we all know, in 1976. Um, the city has no records of an application or a building permit for this uh, building, for this little uh, enclosure. Um, the city planning department to Carter has indicated that there should be no problem with this, but they have no record of it. Our problem came is when the bank looked at the records, they said, well, you don't have a building permit for that, so until you get a variance or something to show us, we're not going to give you a mortgage. The end result is we lost a mortgage, we lost our interest rate, and we're here before you because of that. Um, the city has, t there's a letter in the, fi in, the, in the public file that th has no problem with this. It's been existing for a long time. Uh, the third page is the neighbor's letter. Uh, he's had it for a long time. There's no problem with it as far as he's concerned. Um, so the reason we're here before you is because of some problems with uh, mortgaging the property that banks have brought this up. Even though, um, if I was asked, I would say that the city has given a letter indicating that uh, they have no problem with this, this goes back. No one knows how long, but we know that it's at least in the early 70s that <coughs> was going beyond. Um, it's uh, not something that uh, is uh, um, going to interfere with anybody's property, the veteran property owner. Uh, exists there. It's a small piece of property. Uh, as you can see in the second page, the, fl the trees almost en engulf it. It uh, sole purpose is really to hide some of the motors that uh, run the pool pump and so forth, so that it, to that extent it, it helps making the property uh, more attractive. Um, I'd like to uh, say a lot more about it, but there's, that's it. All right, any questions for Mr. Prunier? Um, we have no questions. You've Thank silenced you. silenced us all. I hope this continues all night. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else who'd like to speak in favor of the uh, proposed, I guess we'll call it, shed at 55 Wood Street? Uh, anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Thoughts on the matter? Anybody want to jump in, Mr. Shaw? I, I'm fine with it. I was main, the main thing I wanted to get out of tonight was just like kind of why we were here. And so Attorney Premier answered that question for me already. So it makes sense. And I think this is one of these situations. It was kind of just basically more or less take care of the paperwork. I don't see, you know, if there was if there was an issue from the uh, neighbor at 57 or there was something that indicated this is really causing a problem, but the long-term existence and everything else about it, um, I'm very comfortable with it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Boucher. I uh, agree, pre-existing condition, and I got really nothing else to, to add to Mr. Shaw's comments. Mr. Lino? I have nothing to add. It's uh, been there. 45 to 50 years and you can't see it from the street
because the yard kind of slopes down. It's kind of cut into the yard, and you can't even see it from the other from the adjoining property because yeah. it's it's, it's Very no weird. higher than the fence. So, yeah. I mean, we're not going to have we have no interest in pursuing any code enforcement actions on it. I, um, and my thought is the same. The only thing I have to add is when I went to take a look at it, I agree with Mr. Falk. You you, you can't see it from the street. Uh, you know, the little variant sign was up, so I knew I was at the right place. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't have been sure if I was there. But uh, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, Mr. Lionel, would you like to make a motion? Sure. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> uh, okay. I would like to make a motion. Uh, the uh, owner is the Rita Seneca Revocable Trust. The address is 55 Wood Street. The request is a uh, variance to encroach nine feet into the 10 foot required left side yard setback to maintain an existing shed. Uh, this is in the RA zone and the setbacks are listed in uh, code section 190.16, table 16-3. Uh, the shed has existed for many, many years it's uh, the variance is needed uh, to enable the continued use of the property. Um, there's no good reason to uh, to take down the shed or to make it uh, meet the setback requirement. Um, it's within the spirit of intent of the ordinance. Uh, it's been there for many, many years with no complaints. The city doesn't care. Uh, the neighbors don't care. Uh, it's not not contrary to the public interest in that sense, and it would be a substantial justice to the homeowner to uh, allow the variance. Thank you. A motion on the table. Sex. Is there a second to the motion, Mr. Shaw? Any discussion on the motion to approve? No discussion. A show of hands in favor. So that's unanimous. So that's approved. And I, I know you know the 30-day window of appeal. And with that, I will close the public hearing on case number two and open the public meeting on case number three, which is 285 West Hollis Street Realty, LLC is the owner. Uh, the applicant is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the address is 285 West Hollis Street. And this is a request for a use variance to convert, convert the use of a building from professional office to single family residential. It's in the GB zone in Ward Good evening again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Again, for the record, my name is Gerald Prunier. I'm an attorney with offices in Nashua, New Hampshire, and I'm here representing the applicant this evening. And again, I would like to renew my uh, objection to proceeding with less than the full board, but I will proceed and, and go ahead with it um, just so I can protect my appeals. Um, this is a house that was, that's been built. Um, Six, late 60s that's been there for uh, a, an awful long time. Um, in 1976, the zoning ordinance was changed in which it put it into the business section. Um, it stated, I'm, I'm, I'm going from memory and for what the best I can get from historic uh, perspective from the people that seem to know about it, is that it stayed as a house for a very long time and then it uh, became, the last I knew, it became in the in the 90s, uh, it a, as a, a real salon. estate broker. Their salon, salon than a real estate. Yeah, okay. And that's what it came. Uh, after the real estate brokers left, the, the applicant uh, tried to uh, sell it again as a, uh, uh, or rent it again as a business. Um, could not. The only uh, concern, the only applications that he had, or people that are interested, were people that wanted it as a home. Fact is, the potential buyer of this thing, if this is approved this evening, uh, is here this evening with his mother. Um, that they they would like it just as as a home. It's one of those pieces of property that could go either way, depending upon what the market is at the time, and the market for office space. Is, is, hasn't been there. Um, it's, it is, on the other hand, next to a automotive parts dealer, um, a Dunkin' Donuts is a little further down, uh, another block down, but um, at the present time, the only interest has been 
is then for a, uh, a residential house, which it was when it started, when the zoning, when it was built. And that's what they'd like to return to. Um, and that's where we're here this season. There's no going to be a, any exterior changes, so there's not going to be any diminution of value of the surrounding properties, which are uh, commercial on one side anyways, residential on the other side. Um, it, it's just one of those properties that uh, is, is very unique. It, it could go either way. I could be here this evening trying to say I want this to be commercial, but it's, it's, it's not uh, big enough or the purpose of the property is not there, and they'd like to keep it as a residential unit. There's a buyer for it that wants to buy it and stay there and use it as a house. All right. Thank you. Glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Attorney Pernier? Uh, you've silenced us once again. It's 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 my night, you know. It's uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have any butters, <laughs> and I've got uh, nothing to say on too much on all these things. It, it is what it is. We're saving them up for your next one. Pardon? We're saving them up for your next one. Oh, I it's I'm sure I'm sure, Miss Lionel. All right. Uh, is there anybody else who'd like to speak in favor of this application? Anybody with questions, concerns, or opposition? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Thoughts, Mr. Lionel? Um, I don't have a problem with this. I, mean, I guess the only issue, the, the issue is that it's now in a, a zone that doesn't permit single family houses. <coughs> and if these people want it as a single family house and they're happy with its location, I don't, I don't see what the issue is. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boucher? Uh, I have no issues with it. Seems odd, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. So uh, I don't have a, a problem with it as far as, you know, um, in, this, in this forum, I don't have any issues with it. So. Thank you. Mr. Shaw? Yeah, I think I'm fine with it. I mean, the other thing is, it is right up against the RA zone, so it's not like we're talking about this plop down in the middle of a GB zone or something like that where it would not at all have any connection to surrounding neighborhoods. So I think just kind of from that perspective, uh, to me, that is also very helpful in terms of this. So. Yeah, it's, it almost seems like, again, kind of the opposite way of the way a lot of this stuff seems to go, but, and even Attorney Prunier noted that it feels like this is one of those spots that you could easily be arguing either way. Somebody could be arguing for the other side of West Hollis Street here to take a residential and convert it to some sort of commercial use. So I think we're just at very much a transitional part of, of these uh, neighborhoods and these areas. So. Thank you. Yeah, my thoughts, I'm supportive of the application. I mean, it's interesting when, when, when I go look at it, it actually, I think it looks more like a house than a business. And, and to what you said, it's, it's right on the, the border. And I don't see any issue with it reverting back to a home. I mean, and, and also, to me, it looks like it'll be a fine functioning home. Is it a busy street? Yeah. Is there a business on the left side of it? Yeah. But it could to me be a fine home it has a driveway you can pull in and turn around and pull out on the busy West Hollis Street I think it'll be an okay home so I see no reason to deny so uh, anybody like to make a motion Mr. Shaw I'd like to make a motion on behalf of the owner 285 West Hollis Street Realty the address is 285 West Hollis Street and the request is for a variance to convert the use of a building from professional office to sing single family residential, and this is in the GB zone. Uh, the uh, zoning restriction as applied does interfere with the landowner's uh, reasonable use of the property. In this case, uh, some of the unique aspects of this property is that it was, uh, uh, by all appearances and accounts, uh, built as a single family home uh, quite some time ago, and then was converted to uh, business and commercial usage. It is uh, immediately adjacent to the RA zone with other residential properties. So uh, the 
usage in this area is such that it's very much, again, a transitional uh, set of uh, zoning districts. Uh, there's, uh, this should be with it, this is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, there's no uh, testimony one way or the other, but uh, the board does not believe there will be any negative effect on surrounding uh, property values. It's not contrary to public interest and substantial justice will be served and I move to approve this application. Motion on the table to approve. I'll second the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Show of hands in favor. That's for nothing, so that's approved. And uh, with that, I'll close the uh, public meeting on case number three. We all good to keep going? All right. Moving right along, I'd like to open the public hearing on case number four. The owner is Frank Lykakos. The address is 6 Broad Street. The description is a uh, requesting a variance to encroach six feet into the 10 foot required front yard setback, and that's on Jones Court. And the request is to construct an attached storage garage. The zoning district is a uh, split local business RB zone. <clears throat> Again, for the record, my name is Cheryl Pronier. I'm an attorney with offices in Nashville, New Hampshire, representing the applicant this evening. And again, I'm uh, uh, making my objection to the fact I'm proceeding with less than a full board and preserving my objection. Mr. Lionel doesn't know that I did this for years uh, <laughs> and even tried to change the, uh, the ordinance and someday we'll probably get it changed, but at the present time. Um, this is a piece of property and I, knowing that all of you go out and look at you, it. You could uh, pull that mic out if you want to yeah, do a little carry. Yeah, okay all of you go out and look <laughs> at, at these properties for, for when they, be, they come before you. This is on Jones Court, which for most people in Nashville, if you ask where Jones Court is, most people don't know. Um, I've been involved with various pieces of property on Jones Court, so I'm somewhat familiar with it. Um, Jones Court comes off of Broad Street up in this particular area. The trust, the applicant owns all of this property here on Broad Street and the apartments on the other side all along Jones Court and owns the vacant piece of property that's in the rear of the building, the long piece of property. Um, what he is trying to do, he would like to do is put up a garage that he can store his equipment, his backhoe, his trucks, and so forth for the winter instead of having to, which he stores there now uh, during the winter uh, in, it gets snowed on and he has to clean it up so he, he'd rather put it, uh, put it inside. Um, this is a dual zone area. Um, we were trying to, uh, Carter and I, to figure out whether I had to come here for a use or just a dimensional requirement. Um, if it was just for apartments, um, for car storage, I don't think we need to be here, but it's for equipment that is storage. So it's, we were, tra we're trying to take the safe way, just coming before you and saying that we, uh, we would like this for a garage for uh, equipment. Um, the rear setback is seven feet, which is required by the zoning ordinance. It's the front setback. That, that is the problem. We only have four feet along uh, what we're proposing for the building. Um, the other building that is already constructed is three and a half feet off of Jones Court. Um, my client has asked me to see what could be with Jones Court since he owns all the property on both sides of it, of what could be done with it. The problem is that uh, right now the only way I can think about it doing this is having to come before you and, and asking for a variance to have buildings not on a public way. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to do that, but at the present time, uh, my client owns, as I say, the properties on both sides of Jones Court, and in the winter time, he plows Jones Court, not the city, even though it's a public street. He plows it and he plows the sidewalks in front of, of the uh, particular buildings. Um, this building will be in the rear, so it'll be pretty much out of sight of anyone coming along Broad Street. Um, it's uh, going to be a, a garage, 
garage and uh, for, for the storage of his equipment. It's uh, not going to ask any more traffic to the area because the equipment's already there. Um, it will take out the equipment from being out in the open into a garage so it's out of view and to that extent would be better uh, for the area. Um, as you saw when you went out, this is a big wide open area uh, in the rear that he owns and um, he would like to do something with it. One of it is the putting the garage. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions instead of going on. Questions for Mr. Prunier, Mr. Shaw? So I just want to make absolutely sure I understand. So there's, from what I count, there's actually appears to be five different lots on Jones Court here. And the applicant owns all five of those. Yeah. OK. Just wanted to make sure I, I caught that. Because at first, I thought you were just describing kind of the open parking, uh, the rest, the remaining part of six, and not the other last lot there. So. Um, so the proposal is to maintain the required setback, rear, rear setback, uh, although I don't know if that's uh, yeah, it's, that it's, is the rear it's, setback. This is an but interesting lot, yeah. uh, Mr. Shaw. Maybe uh, I'll let Carter explain it to you why we're, we're in this situation, because we tried to work on this for a while. And, uh, well, it's actually a corner lot. Yeah. It's got Broad Street and Jones Court frontages. So a corner lot has two fronts and two sides. So uh, it would be a front yard um, where the front of the garage would be. And the front yard setback is 10 feet. It meets it in the, on the side in the, in the back at seven feet. So it's just really the variance for the uh, front of the building. So I guess what, so you, your proposal is to meet that seven foot setback in the back. That's correct. However, the, the, the primary part of this is the encroachment into the front setback on Jones Court. So uh, what, what was considered regarding, I guess, the options as far as the depth of this um, structure? Because it looks like it's 36 feet proposed, right? So I don't know if that was investigated. So if the, if the depth of the structure itself were, sh were shorter, 32 feet, let's say, there'd be less encroachment. How, what does that do, if anything, to the usage of this for the intended use? Is it, it would impair with some of the equipment that he wants to put into it and take away from the purpose of the, uh, we, we, we tried to make the building uh, as small as we could from there on, on, on this spot, the width of it, uh, to try not to come into anymore and probably wouldn't be coming before you with four feet if it wasn't for the fact that Jones Court is not used. It's, it's a public way, but it's not a public way. And it's really a public way only to about up into here in this area. And uh, it, it's, it's this part of it is not a public way. It, it, uh, sometimes Carter and I spend a lot of time trying to uh, play devil's advocate with, with each other to try to see w what we could do to, to make it. And um, because there's, there's a, an expense being paid doing this thing and so forth, um, trying to protect a client and trying to make it so that we don't have any problems with the city, that's why we're before you too, because we feel that this is one of those cases because of the property, its location, the, si the, the width of the property, everything else, makes it kind of unique and uh, and what we're trying to do is is not um, it's not a manufacturing facility it's a take away from the view of the neighbors the backhoe the trucks and so forth and put them away so it does takes away from the neighbors but it also helps my client in the winter time he can go into a truck that doesn't have to be brushed off and take the snow off and and do, do the stuff with it and it's we're not bringing something new to the area it's already there yeah I just and I, I do totally understand where you're coming from and I think it's, you know if you work with that 36 feet as your minimum requirement your only other option to try to have less encroachment into this front would be to have it in that rear or side setback which is going to be more impactful 
to other properties owned by somebody else. So in many regards, this seems like the best alternative has been considered and is being presented. I just wanted to make sure I understood that, you know, kind yeah, of the context. I understand. And when I, when, the, when he came, my client came to me with his handwritten drawing, I said, you know, really, we need something because that's an, that the surveyor does so that we have the right measurements because I don't want to go to the zoning board and say there's uh, four feet here, and next thing you know, there's only two feet. Or there's seven feet in the rear, and really there's only four feet. So I, the whole, I, I wanted him to, I told him he had to spend a little money to uh, make sure that what we were doing was correct and what we were representing was correct. And, and you know we definitely appreciate and, and find that these kind of drawings and survey you know, plans are extremely helpful to understand these situations because it, it okay. can get abstract very quickly or like you know the yeah. uncertainties or vagaries of, of what you know, somebody it, thinks It's sometimes they know where the difficult, Mr. Shaw, getting people to spend some money because they're really not big developers or they're not much of, but when you're going to spend some money, you better make sure that what you're representing and what you want is correct. And, and this is why on these occasions I try to tell my clients it's well worth the money to make it exact so that when it comes time to build it and you go to the city and the city goes out and take a site walk and says, hey, that's only four feet, you know, and you got your foundation in, it's, it doesn't make sense. So it's. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, did you? Uh, yeah. I'll agree with Attorney Pernier. We did meet and talk about this quite some time, and you know, with, even with tracing paper and trying to figure out whereabouts, how this would fit in. And, and we all thought it was better that, you know, the encroachment is into his own property. It's not onto a neighbor's property, which we thought was a, a more optimal situation. You know, he owns the property on the other side, so he's only, he'd only be impacting himself. himself so. Yeah, which, which was my yeah, kind of exactly. Away That's what we that. all thought, yeah. too. The other thing I observe is the existing building is three and a half feet from uh, John's Court. So uh, the proposed design would actually look better yeah. than, um, than if it were shifted or, or narrowed considerably. Yeah. And that building is much older, too. I think that's a very uh, important point in that when I went to look at it is what the applicant is asking, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't any more encroachment than what's in the building already in front of it. And uh, so you've already got that encroachment that's been there for decades. And, and this essentially matches that to me as a special condition of the property. It's not really a question, I'm just, well, well let's just put that out, Mr. Shaw. And the other thing is, it also has more encroachment into that side yard setback, or what appears to be the rear yard. So, so this actually is, I mean, that part isn't compli isn't fully compliant, whereas this will be, so. At least on one side, right. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Prunier? All right. There's no opposition on record or here, so I'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, thoughts? Uh, maybe I'll throw out my, my opinion first, if you don't matter. I'm, I'm supportive of it. Uh, I, I guess another point is, uh, you know, in a lot of times when we've had properties in this area, uh, the, the businesses that are bordered by homes, you know, they're there always seems to be some opposition and my, my thought is that this proposed structure is more in concert with the, the homes behind it because what happens now is there's equipment and there's parking there's headlights there's noise my expectation is if this building were to go in it would just be the back of the building and it would be much quieter for, for the abutters on the back side which wasn't spoken of tonight but it's just a thought I had but I'm supportive of it as it is uh, Mr. Boucher? Well, I, I support the application um, for all the reasons you said and that was spoken. And I think it actually will enhance that 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 street. Right? It'll, I think it'll look better. It'll look cleaner, more organized. And um, and as far as the encroachment, you know, again, it's it's I think it's a unique piece of property, um, 
and uh, like I said, it helps that that the applicant owns pretty much the whole street. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I fully concur with what you guys just said, and uh, appreciate the point you made about the for those uh, rear abutters that they will actually probably be less impacted ultimately with the structure going in. So I hadn't thought about it in that way. So I think that's a further uh, further positive in this. Mr. Lino? Uh, I, I agree. Um, I like that, you know, visually from the, the perspective of Jones Court, it will look like it won't look any worse than the uh, existing building. Uh, same, pretty much the same distance. So, uh, and I agree that the, uh, the residents and the neighbors would probably prefer having a garage there than having the open equipment. Would you like to hazard a motion? Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Frank uh, Liekakos. If I got that, probably mangled that. Uh, address is 6 Broad Street. The request is uh, a variance to encroach six feet into the 10 foot required setback, front yard setback on Jones Court to construct an attached storage garage. Uh, this is an unusual property uh, with an existing, uh, existing building that already uh, is in the, inside the setback. Uh, the desire is to uh, build a, a garage to shelter existing equipment. Uh, and there's uh, been a, a great attempt to put this together so that it did meet all the setbacks and that was not possible. This is uh, really the only way to make it work. Um, it is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Um, we think that uh, it will actually make the uh, surrounding parcels uh, perhaps look more valuable. Um, it's definitely not contrary to the public interest and substantial justice would be served. Uh, it is in the uh, LBRB zone and code section is 190.16, table 16.3 for the setbacks. I second that motion. Any discussion on the motion to approve? I'd just like to note, I mean, we had it certainly in plenty of the previous uh, discussion, but just also the fact that the applicant and owner owns all the other properties on this street, so uh, no no opposition there, and certainly any any of the impact is, is on the same uh, owner so uh, that is also further I think uh, reason to uh, see this as uh, no negative impact to other properties thank you for that clarification any other discussion on the motion see none a show of hands in favor of the motion so that's approved uh, good luck with that garage and with that I'll close the public meeting on case number four have a good thank evening sure. Mr. Prunier uh, we have two sets of minutes package uh, we're good to keep going over this right now okay and first is June 13th uh, I just wanted to point out there was a correction I discussed with mr. Falk that I asked uh, for uh, and that is on page 16 in the middle uh, under where it says seconded by Ms. Vitale the way it's worded right now I think is a little unclear as to whether the board stipulated a privacy fence was added, but Mr. Falk clarified that uh, in the discussion we did stipulate a privacy fence, and he has made an amendment. Yeah, I made a slight amendment to the to the minutes, and I basically added another sentence onto us, what Mr. Courier said, and um, even in our approval letter that we sent out to the applicant, that was one of the stipulations as well. I think I gave you that in the email as well, so I, I think they're all we're all set with it. So there is that amendment which, which clarifies that we stipulated a privacy fence. I didn't have any other amendments to the June 13th minutes. Did anybody have any other concerns or clarifications? That, that was actually the only thing I noticed in here. I actually did. Oh, good. It was a little it did, odd. The yeah, it didn't make, I was like, well, was it or wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for, yeah, digging into that also. I caught. I guess I'll make a motion to approve the June 13th minutes with that one amendment we just discussed. Is there a second to that motion to approve these? Uh, okay. I wasn't here. So yeah, I wasn't <laughs> here. But, okay, I'm but, sorry. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, we. But you know, I, kn I know we've kind of had different practices on this. I think at some point the board is can still act as a whole. I know oftentimes our practice has been to only 
uh, uh, mostly have the members that were in attendance. If you want to do that, it's only the two of yeah. you, which I don't know if that's appropriate, so I would suggest either we all vote or you wait until the next meeting. Um, I agree we all vote. I think that, uh, I mean, uh, if, if, if you've, you weren't there, if you've read through that, uh, that was the only uh, issue. I, I think I'm okay with taking a vote on it now. And if you want to abstain, Mr. Lionel, you could, or if you didn't have an issue, uh, it's your purview. I mean, I, I read through them. So I, I guess uh, we're going to go ahead and take a vote. We have seconded a vote of, to uh, approve the minutes of June 13th with the one amendment. Is unanimous, so that carries. Uh, we also have the minutes from June 27th. Um, did anybody have any questions, concerns, or amendments to that? I, I did not have any myself. Uh, seeing none, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 27th, 2017, as presented, seconded by Mr. Boucher. Any show of hands in favor? And that's unanimous. So that takes care of our minutes. And we have an agenda uh, for the next meeting, which is July, that date? 25th. 25th, thank you. Um, so we're looking for regional impact for the July 25th uh, agenda. I saw none. Mr. Shaw sees no regional impact. Mr. Lionel I sees agree. no regional impact. Uh, I don't see any regional impact. Uh, Mr. Boucher? No. No, so that's uh, unanimous, uh, no regional impact uh, for the July 25th uh, agenda. Uh, is there any other business before the board? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn at uh, 742, Second. seconded by Mr. Shaw. All in favor? So with that, we're, we're adjourned. <laughs>